am thrilled to have our guest on today. I'm going to kick us off and get us started because my clock just turned over to the half hour and it means hopefully yours did too. So welcome to all of you that have joined us today for another amazing episode of The Nonprofit Show. One of my uh, favorite people, we met, gosh, probably over a decade ago now, Josh, but uh, Josh Wise, president and founder at 10 to 1 PR. And he is sharing with us today, as I like to say, you know, opening his brain, really like dumping out all this knowledge that he's um, acquired over many years of being in the sector and in the industry, public relation tips for nonprofits. So we will yeah, we're very excited and we will hear more from Josh here shortly. Um, and again, we start every episode by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of our presenting sponsors. We are so grateful to have your investment, not only in the show, but in the community at large, because each and every one of these sponsors literally exists to help you do more good in your community. So please do find them online. Give them a like, some follow, some love. Uh, let them know that you saw them here on the nonprofit show. And again, we are just so grateful to have their support here of our now 320 plus episodes. So we are getting up there in age, but I am also grateful to Julia Patrick. Maybe you can um, show, yes, our beautiful photos there. Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, of course, joins us. And thanks to her, we have these beautiful episodes um, each and every weekday. I'm Jarrett Ransom, also known as the Nonprofit Nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And I'm always pleased to, to be alongside you, Julia, for this journey. Again, 320 plus episodes. All of them are archived. You can find them. Uh, Roku TV, Fire TV, TV, uh, YouTube, let's see, Vimeo, you name it, it's out there. So thanks so much for, for creating this opportunity. And it's just been a phenomenal journey. So again, today's episode and our topic, we are speaking with Mr. Josh Wise about all things PR. So welcome and thank you, Josh. Thanks so much for having me on. It's great to talk to you both. Okay, Josh, I got to tell you, I don't know how many times this has happened. Maybe never. But we actually have a question that came in about our Chitty Chat Chat. So even though we're going to have you give us your wisdom and your top tips for PR uh, as it relates to the nonprofit sector, mm -hmm. let's kick this off because for those of you joining us with, during the Chitty Chat Chat, we were talking about photographing patrons at events with cocktails in their hands. We have somebody that came on and asked the question, what about those events that are beer or cocktail centric? Um, events that promotes the mission of the organization. So how do you, how do you, you know, navigate that piece of it? Um, I think that's a great question. My yeah. suggestion would be, I would still try to not have people holding the drink in their hand. Mm -hmm. It's one thing if it's on the table or if there's a display of the different wines or there's a display of the different scotches or whatever in terms of the networking event, because you're, now it's a different thing versus attaching an individual mm -hmm. to the individual beverage. And so it's really a protection of them um, in terms of you know, them not being embarrassed down the road because the picture comes up and, and they, they feel odd or that it embarrasses the organization because the picture is taken out of context. Right. Um, so that would be my suggestion, but I think it's a great question and you're right. There's a lot of great events around wine tastings and scotch tastings and all these different things. Absolutely do that. But in the caption, right? When that picture goes out, you want to say why there's all this alcohol in front of them. You want to say at the scotch tasting, you know, Billy, Joe and Molly, you know, you know, were at this event. Totally appropriate. I just wouldn't do it with a drink in their hand. You know, I agree. And I, and I know we're going to get into your, your PR tips. And I'm thinking too, in our community here, like Tito's is a wonderful beverage sponsor at so many events and to share, you know, thanks to our beverage sponsor, fill in the blank craft brewery. That's a big thing mm -hmm. as well. And I think there's a lot of ways and I am not the PR expert, but I think there's a lot of way to really like, you know, tilt your hat, nod your head at your sponsor, but maybe not as you're saying, Josh, having that beverage in, um, in an individual's hand so that it's not taken out of context. So right. great thank question. You. Yeah, thank you to our um, viewer from New Jersey. I'm, I'm assuming you're from New Jersey who asked that. 
You know, that is why you want to have a um, step and repeat like behind us. Really? You know, you want to be up those sponsors that have written checks to you to get that event going. This is what it's all about. They want to see their logos. So for you to put your patrons in front of, in front of something like Josh says, that makes it more logical of why they're there. But I agree with you, those images and captions get lost so quickly and then they resurface and there is no context unless you have something. So yeah. that's cool. I, hey, this is a good episode when the when the guests, <laughs> the viewers are asking questions before we get going. Right Love out it. the gate, yeah. Okay, Josh, so no pressure. I mean, we like put you on the hot seat, too sweet as we like to say, but let's get into it. You've got some tips for us to help us with our, our PR. I do. The first one, as weird as it sounds, is that it's not bragging if you can back it up. I love it. Okay. So we need to get out of our comfort zone as nonprofits to know that it is okay to talk about yourself and brag about your success stories. And, and it's a state of mind for the executives, yeah. right? It's a state of the mind for the, the people in the organization to do, and that we need to start doing that. It's okay to beg. It's okay to share your good news. It's okay to talk about your success stories. And we'll get into that. Um, so it's okay to brag and you need to do that. And that's a big piece of what public relations, frankly, is you can humble brag, but you still got to brag. So don't be afraid of looking for every opportunity that you have. And once you can get past that mental hurdle, you're going to recognize so many more story opportunities that you have. Yeah. And don't you think that's what our constituents really want? Like they want to know that they are part of that success and that they get to brag right alongside with us. And so when we're able to share those good stories, because I know over these episodes, Julia, we've had some questions come on to say, should we actually brag? Because then we might not get more money or our donors. It's the other way around. I think that if you brag, people yeah. want to be part of a winner. Exactly. They want to feel like their money is going to a place where it's going to be well used. Yes. And, and we'll share more examples as the conversation goes, I'm sure, of exactly different things that you can do. But it's really that mental game of realizing that you need to be positive. You need to say, look at me, look at what we just accomplished. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where you build your stories around. That's where you build your image and your brand and your reputation. So you have to brag. And I know that, you know, personality wise, a lot of us don't like to do that. And that's okay. You're not doing it for yourself. It's not about promoting you personally, even though sometimes you're a better story than the organization, right? You're sometimes you're almost more interesting. Um, use anything you can to help the organization to get it out there and to raise that awareness. So Josh, you used something that, a, a phrase that I loved and you said, the humble brag. That's a real, I think that's like perfect because I think a lot of nonprofits, they can, can reframe that for themselves and then mm -hmm. feel better or more confident about doing that. I, I absolutely love that. And what a great, great way to, to start off because I imagine that's gonna frame everything. Um, well, and I, and I really wanna put you in the hot seat there. So give us an example, if you would, Josh, of like, what is a humble brag? What does that look and sound like? I, I think a great example is, let's say you win an award. Mm -hmm. You can put out that announcement, we're so honored to have received this award or to be recognized by our peers or to receive this, you know, this high praise. So with somebody else, it's you're promoting the third party credibility that someone else gave you. Yes. You're bragging about somebody else saying you're good. <laughs> and you can back um, that up. <laughs> and you can back it up. Yeah. Um, and so those are perfect examples of you need to do that because it really you know, gives people confidence in who you are. Sure. Um, the humble brag of announcing a promotion within your organization, right? Sometimes, you know, a simple announcement about a new hire, you're bragging about growing. Um, you're bragging, you know, about the resources you have available to you now. Right. We have there's, board members coming on, maybe an advisory yeah. council. So there's so many opportunities uh, to really employ that humble brag. So thank you for allowing me to 
you know, put you in the hot seat and say, what does this look like? Because I know for a lot of our viewers, and, and I feel like Julie and I are pretty good at this, like, okay, let's ask the question that I think our viewers really want to want to ask, but might be a little too worried, you know, or concerned about asking. So that was tip number one. And we're moving into tip number two when it comes to uh, PR, just suggestions and tips for your nonprofits to really strengthen your public relations. So the first one was the humble brag, and you can brag about anything as long as you can back it up. So what does number two tip look like? You need to celebrate your wins. You got to celebrate the easy stuff. Don't forget about the low hanging fruit. So it goes back to like an example being what we just talked about, about a new hire. It could be hiring a new receptionist, right? At the organization, you should still put out that press release. Right. It's not going to be a front page story, right? We're not <laughs> pretending that it is. But just saying Josh has hired a receptionist at this nonprofit and sending my photo to the community newspaper, it's not going to be in the daily newspaper. It's not going to be on you know, the Today Show, right? You know, the small little announcement sends an important message that you're growing and that you've got support within the, you know, the community and, and all that kind of stuff. And here's the thing that you, know, you don't want to say. You may have just fired five people and only hired one and put out a press release about the new person. Right. <laughs> people see that. They still think your organization's growing because they have no idea about the structural changes you made behind the scenes. That's right. And yes. so it just builds confidence. The other thing that those simple announcements do, like a lot of community papers are more than happy to run the announcement of somebody in their community. They need to know that the person lives there or they need to know your organization is you know, located in that zip code, right? For the small little newspapers that get left on your doorstep. So they're only doing those small little community papers, you know, those little community news stories. It really goes a long way and you'd be amazed how many people look at that. Yeah. Um, and so that's a simple one. Another example um, would be if you get a, a big donation from somebody, promote that. Promote yeah. you know, graduations from your program. Promote anything, you know, new parts of you know, new partnerships, new everything you can think of, these really small things that you've done a million times. Those are opportunities for you. And so don't throw away the low hanging fruit because the low hanging fruit is what builds your foundation. It builds your base, it builds your general support. And it kind of softens the ground with reporters, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people forget that reporters, they're getting a hundred story pitches a day. And if they're lucky, they're getting to write one or two stories. So even if they ignore your, your pitch or they ignore your press release, if it's appropriately sent to the right person, and if they see you on a consistent basis, when you come to them with a big story, they're much more likely to do it because they already know your name. Even if they never run the story, they're familiar with you. So you need to announce the low hanging fruit and you'd be amazed how many of those low hanging fruit stories actually generate little mentions that, that people notice. Um, but it really does help soften the ground with reporters so that when you need them for that big story, they're much more open to working with you. So I have a technical question on this. What is the appropriate um, time span to be doing this? Like, are we saying, you know, don't do it more than once a week, mm -hmm. don't do it, you know, but every couple of weeks, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, sometimes it depends on the type of story, right? So if you work with somebody enough, you wanna save a big story and not kind of kill it by putting out an announcement a week before, okay. right? That, you know, cause sometimes if it's a monthly publication, they only have time to write one story. So if they've already you know, got your previous press release in the hopper ready to go, and then you give them another story the week after, they may be less likely to run both, or they may try and combine both into one story, um, which then in a way takes away a little bit of what you're doing. For those companies that we work with or organizations that are putting out lots of releases and have lots of announcements, Again, it depends on your audiences, right? If, if one is like a TV story and another one is for a community newspaper, they can go out the same day, even if they're different topics, because there's a different need. There's a different purpose of how it's going to be accepted by that organization. So they're only really getting one announcement, even though you have multiple things happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about that community newspaper, and I'm going to keep talking about that because that's something that nonprofits miss all the time, how important it is to kind of be that community organization and, and build that community reputation those simple community newspaper announcements, I would probably say every 10 days is a better, you know, kind of thing to do. There's also a couple, you know, so even if it's one a week, I wouldn't necessarily put one out on Monday and another one on Thursday. What I would do is I may put one out on Thursday and then put the next one out the following Tuesday, okay. right? Because even just a mental, uh, you know, break of a weekend, 
they don't remember what day last week they got your last press release. They just remember it was last week. Mm -hmm. And it's a big subliminal message to them. And it kind of keeps you in the, the hopper. Um, that said, for most of companies, we usually recommend if you can, you know, a minimum three days between, 10 days is usually better. Um, and that way you don't actually overlap stories by accident within the same publication. I love it. I think that's really great, great advice, because I think that's one of the things is that we, we, if we can understand what the media outlets are doing with the information that we send them, mm -hmm. it helps us to be more successful when we're sending things out. Yep. You know, I mean, you, cause you want to make it as easy um, and as usable as you can, you know, Absolutely. bottom line. Okay, so that was amazing. We've got two great ideas. Now the third one. This is going to be tough because I've loved one and two. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and keep this thread going then and, and continue <laughs> to help. I, hopefully you like all five. Okay. <laughs> and if not, I'll make up a new one. So <laughs> tell me if you don't like one of my, my No tips. pressure, yeah. Okay, I, I'll, I'll, you know, I just want you happy. That's all that matters to me. All right, um, the next one is, you know, think about your visual. And so what I mean by that is, every time you do any announcement, what is the picture that goes along with it? And so when you're figuring out the picture, that's often what will encourage media to attend. If you can explain the visual to a TV station or to the newspaper or to whoever, because they don't want talking heads. They want some kind of movement, right? What's the action that's occurring? You know, they don't want people just standing their arms in arms. They don't like the check presentation, but you know, they love having some, you know, fully dressed, executive in a pool accepting the check, right? Because it's the things around that that make it much more interesting, right? So what is the picture? And when you're trying to figure out what the picture is, here's another way to kind of figure that out. If you couldn't say a word and you couldn't say anything and you couldn't write the exact caption, if you hold up the picture, does it tell the story by itself? Mm -hmm. What is that person who sees that picture? What are they seeing? What are they thinking? It's going to be more than just two people talking to each other, right? What else is in the picture? Yeah, that is such a can, great reminder yeah. because I think so often we think of, oh, we need to do right by our executives, by our board members. We really need to have their smiling faces in the photos. But what I'm hearing and really, you know, like settling into is it's about the action. What is taking place and how does that demonstrate the mission moment or the program, the project in which, you know, either the ask is coming for or the success story is, is built from and to really have that activity um, being front and center and not so much, you know, the face, I right. think is great. Like, okay, the face is important sometimes, but you, the question is how do you use the face, right? So you right. need to get the executive in there and you don't want the back of people's heads, right? In That's the photo. So you want them so, you know, even if you're posing it a little bit, you want them to, to tilt their, you know, face or their head outwards so you can see the two or three people who are talking to each other, right? Because you don't want someone's back in the photo. Right. Um, so you can still get them in there, but it's that action or it's the action of a lot of times for nonprofits, right? When we're giving out stuff or donations or we're giving food or we're giving whatever, you can't necessarily show the picture of the person who's receiving it. Mm -hmm. So at right. that point, you might show their back, but that doesn't mean that your, your staff can't be the ones on camera who are literally holding it out and handing it to that person or loading it in their vehicle where you can't see the full face or even a partial face of the person who's the recipient. But you got that smiling person, you're still seeing enough. You can say, you know, Jared at this you know, nonprofit was loading up supplies for yeah. a recipient. That's a great photo because now it's still action oriented, right? It's not just the grip and grin because newspapers hate that. In all honesty, it, there's, it's too easy to do that. Um, an action photo just goes so much further. And it's really what the news story is. You're talking about something. Um, so, so make your photo um, your story by itself. And this reminds me so much, Josh, and if you remember the early uh, part of the, the virus pandemic, because I, I allude to there being plural pandemics over the last 18 yeah. months, um, but you were so gracious in helping me in an organization press release that I was working with for, an, for a hygiene-based organization. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so appreciative for you to be of service to me in that, in that capacity. And we did just that. So we were shoe boxes filled with hygiene and we actually had the other agencies that 
received our boxes and gave them directly to the individuals themselves, we took a photo of them, right? Because we could photograph their faces and, and literally loading a, a van to the brim of these shoe boxes of all different brands and labels. And that really was the action, um, you know, photograph that, that went alongside the press release that you so politely and graciously helped me with. So this is really driving home kind of like what what are some ways that we as organizations can can take photos and tell our mission and our story so we can have that humble brag um, and it really just kind of all all works together so um, yeah, the other benefit of that photo not only that you can send it to media afterward to describe your action in your story even if they don't come to the actual event mm -hmm. is that you want that for social media anyway right so it's a dual purpose so a lot of mistakes that, that nonprofits and, and corporate businesses make as well, even when they host a media event and no media show up, they, they sometimes just skip the event or they don't bother to take their own photos. No, you still hold the event, even when it's just you. And then the photos that you take get sent out. And so you can take that B-roll video you know, just from your phone. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Take the video from your phone. Take a picture from your phone. And as long as they're high enough resolution and decent quality, you can send them after the fact, and then they're still going to potentially run that photo, right? If it's interesting enough, or they might even on local TV run that TV video. And just as an announcer in the studio, just describe what people are seeing. It's a really short story, but it's still a great story for any business to have or any nonprofit to have. Great so, reminder. I think that's great advice. Okay, so one, two, and three have been really good. The pressure, right. the pressure's on. All right, this one's my favorite, actually, this next one. Okay, good. All right. The greatest thing about nonprofits is they have excellent partners, right, who are helping them do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Nonprofits need to do better at asking their partners to do their PR for them. And so what I mean wow. by that, right, is that we work with a lot of, of for-profit businesses in addition to nonprofits across the country and even across the globe who are trying to promote themselves in North America. And corporate social responsibility is a really important big issue for, for corporate businesses. And they want to be involved and they want to do things and they want to volunteer and they want to make donations and they, all these different types of things, right? So the issue is how do you encourage your partners who are helping you to get publicity for themselves right use their pr department or their pr agency to talk about their donation of backpacks for your back to school drive let them do all the work and then you be there as a spokesperson as a nonprofit as they drop them off where they have gotten the media to come where your executive is now saying, we're so thankful to company XYZ for this donation. It's going to help so many kids in the community. Now your partner loves you. Yes. You've got all the publicity anyway, because you got everything you wanted and you didn't have to do the work for it. And that is so, so now the non that the corporate company wants to donate even more. They want to be even more involved because you help them look good. And so you're actually improving your relationship by letting them do PR on your name to show that they're helping you because it really helps you more than them. That is so brilliant and almost like mind exploding. And I would say this is definitely my favorite by far as well. They've all been great, but this one is like amazing. Now, any tip that you might recommend that we use to communicate this opportunity? Um, and I'm thinking in particular with my fundraising hat on, many of the clients I work with are really looking at that corporate uh, sponsorship, right? So that partnership. How do we include this opportunity or this idea into those early stage conversations, mm -hmm. especially for the CSR, the corporate social responsibility piece? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think there's different ways you can do that. One is in your contract, in terms of their sponsorship, add in a media opportunity clause where you're willing to be interviewed talking about how great they are for the community and for you. I love that. But they still need to be the ones that coordinate it. You don't have to do that. You just need to be available. And the truth is you do it anyway. Right. So you're planting a seed in their mind that it's an opportunity. Right. And it's so a win-win. Like, it's a win-win. And so the other thing that, I mean, I'm saying this in a positive way, but nonprofit professionals, they're used to begging for money. They're used to asking for supplies. They're used to asking. 
why are you not asking for media coverage too? And I'm not talking about to the reporter, I'm talking to your partners because they want it. They're not necessarily, they're, they're donating for the right reason. They're a partner for the right reason, yeah. but they're very open to getting free publicity for themselves that helps your organization. So utilize their staff and their people. Great, great point. Love it. Yeah. And I love that media clause. Like I really, I, I'm going to continue to, to, you know, work with my clients about, okay, when you're approaching a corporate partnership, are you including media? Mm -hmm. If you are, what does that look like? If you're not, why not? Let's go ahead and add that and, and up the ante. I think that's really important. Yeah. Even just offering to give them a quote, even if they just put it on social media, that still helps your nonprofit. Yeah. So, so write then, them a thank you letter that they can arguably share, but make it more personal and, and not a form letter, right? Exactly. Something that they can spread around, even if it's an internal announcement to their own employees, maybe then it goes social media, then maybe it's something that they include in other CSR related efforts that they're putting out to show their involvement, or they can talk about you in award nominations that they're submitting that they're trying to win for themselves. It's Let perfect. them use your name as a nonprofit because all it does is it helps brand and promote you anyway. Yeah. And it really blends and melds that partnership, which is which is really important. Well, moving into our, our fifth and final tip, and I can't believe our time is almost um, done. And this has just been such a robust conversation. But PR for nonprofits, tip number five. Take us home, Josh. Yeah, what is it this still like? comes down to human interest stories. Everything is about what are you actually doing and who benefits. Um, so anytime any of your recipients that you can put them on camera or have them talk about how your nonprofit helped, that's really, really important. It could be a volunteer that you're focused on about why somebody's volunteered so many hours. Whatever the thing is, it's it's kind of sad, but but everyone loves the sob story or everybody loves the success story and they want to see a person. It's not the corporate executive who's talking about the success. It's the recipient who's talking about how the program has helped them. It's that recipient of that shoebox of, of, of supplies. It's that recipient of the food. It's you know, all the different organizations that have donated and why this was important to them. Because some of them may have really important reasons. We've worked with big, big corporate companies that have been clients that have been big funders donating hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to nonprofits. And the reason why they chose that nonprofit is because it's personal. Right, a you know, food insecurity, you know, type of organization. You know, one executive, their their family growing up was was needed help, um, and it was personal, and he was willing to share his story, and so it just makes it mean so much more when you're able to combine those pieces. So human interest is really really important, and it kind of pulls those those heartstrings. And so don't be afraid of asking for those stories because you'd be amazed by how many people are willing to share their story, including your recipients. Three or four of them may say no before you find one that says yes, but that just means you gotta ask more people. Yeah, I love that. I think that's really powerful. And I, I love that, that you um, wrap us up with that because I think that's really powerful. And at the heart of it, you know, when we can tell those human stories and we can and make connections, as Jared always says, the return on relationship. You know, that, yeah. that's a longer term strategy um, and that it really does have power. So that is a, an amazing thing. Hey, this has been Josh Weiss, president and founder of 10 to 1 PR. I got to read this comment that came in, Kim, comes in from Lisa, it says Josh Weiss and the 10 to 1 are local treasure. They have been a tremendous partner to Family Promise of Greater Phoenix. That's They're an right. awesome organization. Yeah. yeah. Thank Very you for, cool. for saying that. I mean, that's, wow. You know, that's, that's when, you know, you've hit the home run. Um, that feels great. <laughs> yeah. That's thank really you, cool. Lisa. And more yeah. importantly, thank you, Julia. Thank you, Jarrett, for this opportunity. It's oh, absolutely. And for all you do. So if anyone has, you know, questions or interest or looking at a PR firm, Josh Wise here, 10 to 1 PR, president and founder, they do work globally. So um, they are in your community. So make sure that you reach out to 10 to 1 PR.com. He's got a phenomenal team. I love following your social media channels because it's a lot of fun. You really add in the personality of your team. And I so appreciate that and have really enjoyed watching, you know, all of your channels grow and I get to learn about your team, even though I'm not necessarily a part of it or working directly with you, but it's really cool to see the good work that you're doing. So thank you. Thank you.
Hey, it's been a lot of fun today. I've learned some great things. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I've been joined today by my co-host, the intrepid nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of The Raven Group. Again, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors. Without you, we would not be here having these amazing discussions like we have today. So thank you, thank you, thank you to helping us um, continue on this. What did you say, Jarrett? How many episodes? It's like 320, 325-ish, ish. Wow. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just counting. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Hey, we want to remind everybody that we've launched a second show, fundraisingevents.tv. We drill down with host Jason Champion, all things related to events. And so um, check that out, fundraisingevents.tv. It's a lot of fun and it, it's such a big part of what we do in the nonprofit sector. Another great episode. Thank you for joining us. As we like to end every episode, we want to remind all of our viewers, and I think ourselves too, right, Jarrett? Please. <laughs> yes. Stay well so you can do well. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow.